Good afternoon, everybody. It's nice to see you and happy uh, new year. It's now 2016 and we're broadcasting live from a very grey day down uh, in Newham. So I hope you have had a good start uh, to term. Uh, for me, it's the third week back, so it feels like Christmas and New Year was a long time time away. So thank you for joining us this afternoon. Uh, we're looking at our webinar this afternoon on religious literacy and uh, how we help uh, build those skills amongst our pupils in our schools. So a few little bits of housekeeping and then some good news. So the housekeeping is uh, if you are looking at me at the moment online, uh, just below you will see there's a box where you can uh, type in any questions that you have and uh, you can send those through while the webinar is live. Um, if you're watching this at another time and you do have questions, please use that box and send them through to us. Uh, they will come through to us and then we'll look at how we answer those for you. But dialogue is a great thing, isn't it? And um, I was always uh, pleased with Plato and uh, his attitude to asking questions, which was no question is too silly a question to ask or for consideration. Uh, so please feel free to use that. Also, I know some of you know that if you look uh, below me, to one side you will see there's a link where you can open up a PowerPoint that goes with this afternoon and what I'm discussing. Um, so you may want to have that in front of you and just listen to me in the background uh, or I know some of you print that off so that uh, you can make notes on it as we're going through this afternoon. So I did say we had a bit of uh, good news as well, which is some of you may have seen last week on the television uh, news report showing that uh, the DfE have uh, sort of set up and launched a new um, website called educateagainsthate.com. That's educateagainsthate.com. And uh, Interfaith Explorers, our resources and the webinars, have been placed on there as a link as a good resource uh, for schools to use to build up uh, tolerance and respect amongst people and thinking about different and diverse. We hope that we're seeing daily in our classroom uh, and educate the next generation to be able to uh, with difference and to make that positive contribution uh, to being part of the society in your government approved. Okay, so today, as I said, we're looking at religious legacy, uh, not legacy, I'm doing with some secondary pupils at the moment, religious literacy. Um, let's hope that I don't make this mistake throughout the webinar. And to show you how RE can make a really positive contribution towards building up those uh, literacy, religious literacy skills in your school. Also to give you um, some strategies to help you uh, put into place. As we know often when there is a school approach to something, it really helps the children to understand how we handle something in our school. activities that you could use that would help build up religious literacy. So, uh, it seems to start with actually defining what religious literacy is. And uh, if you look uh, on the next slide after the session objectives, you'll find that uh, religious literacy is defined uh, as the knowledge of and ability to understand religion. And with this audit for me about uh, staff's needs in RE, this always comes up as something that is concerning to many teachers that they feel knowledge. Now that may mean they have grown up in a, a home that uh, doesn't have any religious beliefs, um, had very strong philosophical beliefs, uh, but not religious 
Italy and, uh, to be part of seasonal celebrations and festivals. Um, and so there's a lack of confidence around that. It may be uh, the opposite on their own particular religion uh, and depending on whether something about uh, what they know in a particular religion. But of us, when we look at the uh, religious diversity in our country, a lot of our country still uh, maybe one or two religions uh, around present in our metropolises. So um, it can be an issue for teachers. Also, we initial teacher training um, that uh, if you received over three hours of some input around and then, uh, that's quite rare and so a lot of our teachers uh, are coming uh, with Thing, um, with uh, with uh, teaching religion. Uh, the second thing is that obviously in the British context, uh, we ha now have more people professing uh, sort of a post Christian uh, um, spirituality, uh, and so um, that then affects the knowledge base within the classroom. So we've got more children who have a background like me, who maybe haven't been to these places regularly. Um, and uh, finally, uh, the Commission on Religion and Belief in Public Life, I'm just reading it to my side here, you can see, said the potential for misunderstanding and stereotyping and oversimplification based on ignorance is huge uh, in Britain. And that's very true. And we often see in parts of our press that oversimplification and that uh, stereotyping. Um, and there is a lot of ignorance. Now, that can be ignorance within a religion where a family doesn't understand the diversity and the different ways things are practiced. But it can also be for those of us who are outside of religion that there is an ignorance then about what people actually believe. And it's very dangerous, as in any aspect of education, that we're basing our responses and our conversation on little knowledge and little facts. So it's important because uh, we're there in the business of educating. And we do not want children who can easily misunderstand, who happily stereotype and who uh, willingly uh, are ignorant. So um, there's a couple of quotations that I want to read and they're from two particular, uh, one from a person and one from a university who have done uh, quite a lot of project work around uh, religious literacy, particularly looking at it from the view of society and why it's still important, even with this rise in humanism or atheism or post-Christian um, belief, that it's, it's still really important and intrinsic to uh, having a good society that we build up these skills for young people. So um, it, the, the understanding these complex religious influences is a critical dimension of understanding modern human um, affairs. In spite of this awareness, there remains a widespread illiteracy about religion. But the most urgent is that it fuels conflict and antagonisms and hinders cooperative endeavours um, and in, in the areas of human experience. So 
it's not just about our school and issues in our school it's also the fact that we're now a global society uh, and at, at that global world where actually us not fully understanding a religion and not fully being able to identify whether somebody is really a proponent of that religion or not uh, because often we find people who will say that they are one thing whereas their actions show something very different if we've got no knowledge of uh, sacred texts if we've got no knowledge of teaching within a religion then we accept things at face value and that can be catastrophic for governments as much as it can be for us as individuals um, and so illiteracy religious illiteracy uh, can lead to conflicts and we have many examples unfortunately of that in the world where people are not prepared to sit down and to actually dialogue and find out and get behind the stereotypes and the easy answers in situations where there's conflict and as you know the whole point of interfaith explorers is to try and help children build up these skills so that they find uh, non-violent ways to discuss and uh, to uh, resolve conflict um, and we've looked at some of those in previous webinars so if you haven't looked at our backlog of webinars then do take a moment to do that because you may find something there that would help you in that the other person in uh, our country particularly who um, has written a lot and published a lot around uh, religious literacy is Professor Adam Dingham and uh, he's at Goldsmiths University so not too far from where I am now and um, he talks again um, about the fact of globalization being a real important factor for us to be able um, to understand what's going on because through the news and through our newspapers we have daily encounters uh, with uh, sometimes people's religious illiteracy um, and again if we haven't got other things to judge those by then of course we just accept uh, what we're being told it's also he points out that in society religion is often barely talked about um, and I don't know whether that's a thing of being British uh, when I've traveled around the world it seems to me that lots of other people talk about God and beliefs and things a lot more easily than we do here in Britain but I suppose if that is true a subset of that then is the fact that we we don't naturally question and we don't naturally talk to people we don't want to offend people often that's a trait uh, of Britishness um, if such a thing exists um, but it is really important that we are in places where we can ask questions and uh, find out more and where we have misrepresentations that we have a way of those being corrected so um, that gives you a bit of a picture of why this is important so as educators it's uh, really important that uh, we know that we shouldn't judge a whole group by the evils committed of a few and on the next slide you'll see that um, I've just pulled out a couple of examples there so we can't judge uh, sort of the 1.6 million uh, billion sorry Muslim people in the world for the wrongful actions of um, Daesh okay um, so in the same way as we can't do that it, it we don't do it in other places i.e the Ku Klux Klan um, have all sorts of Christian supposed beliefs um, and particularly um, symbols used within uh, their meetings and their rituals um, and yet we are not going to judge all the Christians based on the Ku Klux Klan. So the same would be true. We can't judge all Muslims based on one small subset. But of course, if we don't know <laughs> anything about the religion, and that is what we're presented, and that's the only thing we know about that religion, of course we're going to judge the religion on that. And that's why religious literacy is so important, that wider experience is brought to children and for us as adults as well as educators that we're seeing the bigger picture and not limited by our own personal experience uh, 
So, and at the moment, um, we have a large Muslim population in Newham and other cities will uh, find the same around the UK and obviously in other places within the world. And um, in talking particularly to Muslim parents here, they have a real concern at the moment about the images and the ideas that their children are picking up um, and being bombarded with really. Um, so that they would have a negative effect on their identity as a Muslim uh, within society and also their safety. There are some horrendous figures uh, at how much hate crimes have gone up uh, over the last sort of two years within this country uh, towards Muslim people. And that comes from uh, what's happening elsewhere and it comes from people not having uh, literacy skills around religion and being able to make appropriate judgments and uh, understand a bigger picture. So it's really important in our schools that we talk about religion and not only in religious education lessons but actually it comes up in other places um, and so that there is a, a clear dialogue that's happening. So this, uh, it, if it is happening, then forces us as teachers to improve our subject knowledge and it also improves our confidence to be able to talk about these things. So being able to go to a colleague in the staff room at lunchtime and talk about an issue that maybe you've seen on the news or something that you want further clarification on is really important because what that's doing is it's building up our skills to be able to have that important conversation if it comes up in class or even to open up and ask questions uh, about certain things that are on in the news. Um, it also helps us as teachers to overcome fears, um, which often happens if we don't want to touch a controversial issue or a difficult situation uh, or topic. And that may be that it's something that's happened recently, for instance, like those uh, Paris bombings and, and killings, um, that that teachers need to have confidence and strategies in place as to how could we handle this well so that learning is in step with the world but also is building up the skills of children and young people to be able to discuss uh, these matters well and reasonably. And actually as they do that they begin to filter what they can trust and what they can't trust and where bias comes in all things. And those are important things for our young people. So if you're in the PowerPoint, move on, and you'll see there's a couple of um, slides here now that talk about uh, religious literacy and uh, strategies that you can use to help you uh, in the classroom. So one of those, the most important, is that in every local authority uh, in the UK, obviously if you're watching from around the world, this isn't going to be true for you, but you may be able to work out the parts that are right for you, um, are, is an agreed syllabus. So here in Newham, we're about to launch our new agreed syllabus for 2016, um, a document that's been worked on for the last uh, year at the moment. It's got a little bit more work still to do on it. But within there, there are units of work uh, for all pupils in Newham uh, in LA schools to study and follow through. And what's good about these, potentially, is that they've been thought through by uh, not only someone like me, an RE advisor, but also uh, a whole range of different faith leaders and other educators, whether they be teachers or head teachers, so that we as teachers can have quite a lot of confidence that there is a thought through program for our pupils to study about religion. So uh, that means that religions themselves have already had to compromise because they've understood that uh, it can't be about their religion the whole time uh, or philosophy. Often, I think I've said this before, when we talk about religions uh, in RA, we also mean like Buddhism and humanism and atheism. Really, we're talking about philosophies, uh, ways that people work out how to live well in the world. So, um, first of all, you should follow that and look to follow that. Some agreed syllabuses give you more choice, 
Um, and again, you want to make sure that you've got a well-rounded and balanced program of study. And that links back to Ofsted. And that's one of the things that they're looking for now uh, through their inspections is that the RE that is given to pupils is broad and balanced. Uh, secondly, uh, you want to steer away from being too simplistic about religions and beliefs. So um, in training, I often say we want to talk about some Christians rather than all Christians. We might at times want to talk about most Christians um, because actually we can never say everybody does something or everybody within a religion believes something. Um, so we don't want to be simplistic. We do want to be truthful and we want to get things right. Central beliefs are often agreed across uh, different denominations, whether you're talking about Islam and uh, Shia and Sunni Muslims. Muslims, or whether you're talking in Judaism, uh, about Orthodox or liberal Jews, or the same in Christianity. But there will be differences in interpretation, um, how that is understood for today. Um, some writings within holy books are written between, in a particular context. And so uh, scholars and uh, people within the faith read it with that lens on it. Um, and obviously practice can often be very cultural. And we've touched on this before, that uh, somebody who's been brought up in a religion may think the way that they do something uh, is scriptural, where actually it's cultural. And so it's really important that as educators, uh, we use different literary um, examples, whether that's from books, whether that's using things online, different resources, so that we're bringing in those different cultures, we're bringing in those different practices, and that really helps build children's religious literacy and their understanding. We've got to make sure that in our lessons that we encourage debate, um, that it's not always uh, being told what somebody thinks, but actually that there are debates within religion. And if, as a teacher, you've never seen an example of that, on a Sunday morning, I think usually on the BBC, uh, there is a, a debate program and often they have uh, a couple of different religious leaders uh, within there and they look at uh, a couple of topics and what's worth uh, recording or having a look at one of those is you'll begin to see how uh, different Christians or Muslims or Jews or Hindus or Sikhs can take the same text, the same teaching, but apply it in very different ways. So again, that's back to our knowledge, it's back to our understanding. But also you can see that there are debates that go on uh, within religion. The ones that we see the most vocally uh, uh, or visibly, I suppose, is usually the Church of England Synod meetings because they're always on the news and uh, they sometimes they agree, sometimes they disagree. Uh, so we had ones recently uh, where they, would, they were talking about homosexuality and we had one before that about women in leadership. Also within your classroom, um, our developing strategies where pupils are actively listening really helps towards their religious literacy so that pupils are not just saying what they think but actually they're responding because they're listening to what other people have said so if you want to get away from a, a circle time into a more philosophical discussion it's really important that you build up those active listening skills one of the techniques that i often do with pupils is uh without telling them I ask one, you know, A to talk to B. Uh, I don't say then to B until after I've A spoken that they have then got to uh, tell A what they've just said word for word. Now, they'll be really shocked at that because they weren't listening properly. And so children need to uh, practice, as well as adults often, uh, active listening skills so that we can say back to people what they've just told us and then we might want to comment on that. It's really important that we build up reflective learners in RE who are able to think uh, about what they've said, but also about what other people have said, and as I've said, therefore engage in discussions or writings, debates about things. It's really helpful to teach a model when your views have changed. Um, sometimes you think things start a discussion and change to the end of it. I do that all the time. Uh, and um, 
I think modeling that with pupils is helpful that they can see that your views can change and it's okay for that to happen and finally it's really important to use facts and figures uh, to take it back uh, to um, yeah, something factual uh, to when we're debating an issue um, when we're looking at a topic uh, because that gives something concrete to have your discussion around so those would all be strategies that I would be using in my classroom to help build up religious literacy the next few slides uh, I think the next four slides yes they're just above me in front of me um, then look at handling sensitive discussions and um, we've talked about this before and I'm not going to read those through but I am going to ask you to have a look at them uh, maybe as a refresher uh, if you have looked at the webinar where we had that as a topic um, or if it's new to you have a look through because it's just important that if we're wanting to build up these skills that we have ground rules in place that help pupils to have some safety and some confidence about what they're saying that we teach them to use ownership languages um, like in my opinion or using like I said some Hindus um, and that we as teachers learn how to affirm and how to challenge contributions um, and also that we ensure that we're allowing for a range of answers and that the information we're giving is balanced as well. Uh, now there's some examples on the Interfaith Explorers website that you might like to go to which will help your pupils begin to build up some of these uh, religious literacy skills as well as the skills uh, about handling sensitive conversations. There's a great activity um, with lemons which you can always use another fruit for. I often use grapes uh, because it's cheaper and I don't need as many lemons uh, but uh, it also works um, and also there's some great advice on the website for teachers on dealing with controversial issues uh, that you can read and that is also very helpful so um, the last bit of today I just wanted to focus on um, well there's two last bits but this first last bit before we get to questions uh, is about practical activities and so um, I've just mentioned in the slide there, try and avoid asking questions that ask for recall, uh, retelling or comprehension type questions um, because this just leads to very low level uh, RE. If you're at key stage one, two, that's great. But if you're in key stage two, key stage three, key stage four, for us in the UK, that's really talking about children from the age of seven upwards uh, in our schools. We really need to stay away from those simplistic questions. Actually, we need to ask questions that demand for analysis and application. We need to ask questions that ask for synthesis. Uh, so similarities and evaluation. So um, we might want to use something that builds up confidence around religious terminology. I know when I first started teaching, I was sometimes home to teach religions where I hadn't ever met anybody from that religion. Maybe I had a very short conversation with somebody, um, but really I didn't know anybody from that particular faith or worldview. And so therefore, how to even pronounce a particular word within the religion is quite hard. So there's a really useful uh, website, um, the SHAP uh, Working Party website, uh, that provides uh, an audio dictionary for religions. And so as a teacher, you can hear somebody from that religion uh, speaking uh, that particular key word. And I think sometimes that can help us in the classroom. It can also help children as well. So that's a, a really good website. Um, but also that you'll find at the end of the PowerPoint, there's a couple of uh, games that you could uh, print off and use. One is something that I devised um, about a year ago now called Don't Say It, uh, based on a well, uh, sort of selling, well, well good uh, game uh, in the UK where um, children are given uh, a picture 
and uh, a word and told not to say it and they have to get other people to guess what they are without saying that word and so further and started looking at uh, sort of words within uh, religion so for instance uh, if the word is church then uh, you're not allowed to say a place of worship, you're not allowed to say Christian, uh, you're not allowed to say saint, stained glass windows or sung hymns uh, in your answer. And there's different ways of playing this with different age groups. Um, but have a look at that. There's some rules and there's some examples and there's cards that you can print off and then cut up. Uh, we've sort of tended to laminate our ones here in Yum or printed them onto cards. Um, and actually that game is going down really well, helping children with keywords, getting to be familiar with religion, uh, and also a way of describing things. So building up their literacy skills, but particularly around their RE key vocabulary. So that's something helpful. Also, another thing that's really helpful is using thinking skills techniques. So getting to those higher order questions uh, and getting children to consider those. So you'll find after the don't say it game, you will find uh, there is the same similar different worksheet, um, which I saw many years ago at Lap Blaylock use. And um, I'm very grateful to that because I've used it so much uh, with particularly at Key Stage 2, 3 and 4 over the years between lots of different topics as well as between different religions. Um, and this, uh, you'll see there's an example on there using some resources from the website on prayer. Um, but we've also given you the blank on there so that you could use that for any uh, topic that you're looking at. So um, those are just two practical things that you could take away and use from today as, as well as the uh, Lemons activity that you can see demonstrated through a film on the website. So, haha, the questions are coming. So uh, the final thing that uh, I wanted to read you is another quote from Professor Adam Dingham. And it says, religious literacy helps you move from tolerance to respect. That idea of tolerance that you don't really like the person, you don't really want to be near them, but you're putting up with them, to actually really fully understanding and appreciating difference. And that's one of the reasons why um, it's so important for our young people and our children to have the best of us as educators uh, to be able to help them with this. So obviously what your school might need to do from hearing me today will differ from our setting to setting. But it is important to have a look and see, you know, are the RE units uh, being covered? Are different religions being covered? Is there opportunity for debate? Is there opportunity uh, for learning about difference? Are we simplistic in our approach of showing different religions or are we getting into uh, diversity and interpretation? Are we uh, helping children uh, build up their skills to be able to talk about religion, whether that's that we use philosophy for children or another strategy to help discussion uh, and debate. And uh, finally, regular conversations. You know, you as a teacher in your classroom can make a huge difference here by just giving time to this. And they will build up, pupils will build up their ability to discuss and also they will build up because of our positive influence, their curiosity around religion, as well as their ability to respect difference. Okay, so uh, that's that. Got a few questions here. So uh, how do you avoid confrontation when discussing uh, topical news, current affairs about religious conflict? Um, I think you often have to let uh, confrontation in a sense come out but I think that goes back to your ground rules um, I always had ground rules about us not raising our uh, voices uh, so we can't shout at somebody we can't shout somebody down uh, that there's an order in which people uh, say uh, things and you have to decide who makes that choices whether it's the pupils themselves deciding who can speak next or on some controversial issues you as teacher may want to do that I also think uh, preparation is really important. 
So having a look online so for some really good little one, two minute films, maybe from YouTube or somewhere else that we can show, showing two different views on a subject, um, that can help people to see that it's not just this person in the room that's saying something that they find terrible, but actually it's a, a view that's out there. I also think that um, when we're getting children to have a philosophical discussion, then they can begin to question whether that view is based on hard evidence, how much of it is based on interpretation, how much is based on uh, how somebody wants to present something, uh, and what sources they're using for things. And kids are very good as you begin to get them uh, to think about those things and challenge some of the stereotypes around things, uh, to begin to pick those up and be, begin to use those in all their discussions. So, um, you know, people do get passionate about philosophy and religion. And so uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that in our classrooms, but I do think there's something wrong if that is putting somebody down, making someone else feel stupid. Um, I think it's important to be able to pull people up, uh, but also to allow those views to come out um, is important because if we don't allow them to come out, then they're just happening underneath the surface and never being challenged. And that's more of a worry to me than uh, it coming out. So sometimes we've talked before about taking children to one side after a designing, how you want something done or how you weren't happy with something being done. Um, again, you want to keep them to feeling that they are being respected and it's safe to discuss things uh, in your classroom. So another question, how can religious literacy help with dealing with parents who don't want their children to learn uh, anything about faiths? Um, yeah, and, and, and that's the issue that we have at the moment. On one hand, I think um, we'll find when we get the new Education Reform Act, I strongly believe that the right to withdrawing from RE will be gone um, and everyone will have to do it. That seems to fit in with what Ofsted and Prevent and everything else uh, is saying from government at the moment. Um, uh, but also, it may be that you want to do some training around your school support workers around religion and their confidence of dealing with religion. Um, and I know in lots of schools, they've taken the opportunity of different festivals within the year to have assemblies or acts of collective worship where parents are invited in. And then after the end of that, some of the senior teachers in the community, uh, workers within the school, school um, home liaison person, stays around to build up those relationships with parents, but also can have those discussions about religion in a very informal way. And again, that helps to build up what we're trying to do, that we're not forcing beliefs on anybody, but actually we're learning about and learning from. Uh, and that's an important skill for their child. And once parents have understood that, most parents understand then why RE is important and why they'd like their child to be part of it. Um, a bit anecdotal, but yesterday I was in a primary school uh, talking to some parents who were thinking that they might want to withdraw um, their child, maybe from RE, uh, thinking about whether they could cope with their child being in school, with having a very different um, religious belief system from most people within the school. Um, and it was really good to see the way the school asked questions, the way parents asked questions, and actually by the end of our sort of 40 minutes together, that they'd come to some common ground and a way forward. And um, I'm a great believer that that can happen even in the hardest of circumstances with parents. So, um, you know, parents sometimes need educating, and it's okay to educate parents. Okay, so we've got one minute before the end. Uh, so I want to tell you that our next uh, Interfaith uh, Explorers webinar is on Thursday the 25th of February and um, we're booking up a few different people to come and be alongside me for our next few ones. Uh, so we'll let you know who that person will be uh, once we've got those confirmed um, so people are choosing between a number of different dates. But yes, so the rest of this year, we're going to uh, focus 
on building up uh, these skills of religious literacy. So uh, we're hoping that we can provide you with a, a webinar uh, around sort of Christianity and uh, Judaism and Islam. Uh, and we're also hoping that we can talk to some people uh, from governments uh, about uh, strategies and ways forward for schools um, around all of these things because we know it's important for us as teachers at the moment and because it's a new thing for many of us um, sometimes we need a bit of time to get our heads around it and to do our thinking of it so the time is up now thank you very much for uh, spending this 40 minutes uh, with me and uh, if you do have any more questions then please do send them in we're always happy to answer them and uh, I hope the rest of January and the start of February go well with you. And I will see you after the February half term on uh, Thursday, the 25th of February. Okay, bye.